AMD and NVIDIA. Reiterated outperform BMO, AMD, price target 110, NVIDIA 210. So, Josh, NVIDIA, that's yours. Yeah, I think both of these stocks could be range bound until we get some clarity on the direction of the economy next year. Because in the end, you get to a certain size in, in the semiconductor business and you become uh, subject to whatever's going on cyclically. It's very hard to escape that. The, the, the thing that's held NVIDIA back is that this has not been a good year for gaming, and obviously all of the use of GPUs and crypto have fallen off a, a cliff. And then there's concerns about enterprise spend and the data center and cloud and on and on and on. So I don't think those are uh, long-term issues. I just think now Wall Street is particularly sensitive to those headwinds, and it's hard to imagine one or both of these stocks breaking out to the upside. So if you're a long-term investor, though, that's okay. You don't always have to have the month of May you know, every every time you're in a stock. How about the chips here? I think semis are interesting. If you look at the performance month today, they've actually beat just about everything else uh, on, on the board. That makes sense. And, uh, it does make sense to a degree. Well, actually, because the valuations have reset a lot already. They're down for the semiconductors 30 percent. The stocks have reset a lot already. Look at a company like NVIDIA. And I think the optionality for semiconductors may actually come from the end of the tightening cycle. If you think about who's <coughs> likely to rebound the most, it's probably software and it's semiconductors. But I also like the optionality for potentially inflation peaking as well, because semis look like they're some of the more sensitive to inflation coming uh, down from a pretty high level. So I like it. I would like to see probably a little bit more priced in in terms of earnings estimates. Mm -hmm. But we've been going through a couple of quarters or earnings revisions, so that might be enough. Costco reiterated outperformed today at Cowan, target 650. I'm surprised you don't own this one. Oh. <laughs> me too. Right? I mean, it yeah. seems like you. It is me. Well, why don't you? Because it trades at 36 times forward, right? So it's expensive. I can't really get my hands around it. But if it were to pull back substantially, absolutely. Well, what's a reasonable valuation then? It's not going to get there. Because, I mean, I mean I you, even, own, you own other stocks that may be a little bit expensive for your liking. Like but. in the 20, low 20s, you know, if you look at Nike and you look at, and you look at uh, Starbucks and now Disney. I mean, this one is 36 times forward. And it should trade at a premium. There's no question about it given its recurring revenue stream and the subscribers uh, and the 90% plus renewal rate. So it's a great story. It's just, to me, I, it, it acts like... It acts like a staple, it, as it should, given the recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. And where I am in that space is Dollar General. I'd rather own Dollar General. It's trading at 20 times forward estimates. And it acts like a staple. Okay. Yeah, if you get a crack at Costco trading at a discount, that means something's really going really wrong. Really wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This stock's been a, one of the best operators really ever yeah. for mm -hmm. so, such a long time.